In the previous video, we proved that our function g would work to give us an exact calculation of polynomials up to degree 3 between the boundaries of negative 1 and 1. Now we want to make sure that we can use our function g from a to b instead of negative 1 to 1. So let's take a look at that. So you've thought up your function f and now we're wanting to know what the integral is from a to b. And I need to get that in such a form so that I've got a negative 1 and a 1 instead of an a and a b because all the tricks that we've thought up until now were for using the interval from negative 1 to 1. So how about I transform this I look at this x not as a variable but as a function as a function of u. So let's say x of u I'm going to find that as being b minus a divided by 2 times u plus b plus a divided by 2. Now you might ask yourself, where does that come from? And I think you'll see where it comes from if I do a couple of values. So x of negative 1 would be, so if, if you were a negative 1 here, and that would just swap this, this a and b around this negative sign, right? So it would have a minus b over 2 plus b plus a over 2, right? And we see that we have a negative b and a b. So we have a over 2 plus a over 2, which of course adds up to a. And if I take x of 1, then I just have... So if x is a 1 now, a uh, u is a 1, then that doesn't change anything up here. So I have b minus a over 2 plus b plus a over 2. Now the 2's cancel out, and I'm left with b over 2 plus b over 2, which is, of course, b. So I want to use this function... with integration by substitution. And the rule for integration by substitution, there are a couple variations of the way to, to write this, but I'm going to write it in a way that is useful for us. So we have the integral of f of x from a to b, and we can rewrite that as x to the negative 1 of a and x to the negative 1 of b and we our integrand is now f of x of u times x prime of u so that is just the rule for integration by substitution so let's Go ahead and write that that way first. So we have x to the negative. Actually, can I just copy that? I think I'll just copy that. Got to get better at copying than that, though. There we go. So I'm going to write that this way. Uh, actually, I would have loved to have written over that. So let's... I don't want that. So, this is taking longer than I would have thought. So we can get rid of that and get rid of that. And we'll select this and 
move that over here. So, that's what we had wanted. So now we can plug in for our variables. So what is x to the negative 1 of a? Well, what does that even mean? x to the negative 1 of a just means what f value do we have to put into x in order to get a? And we saw before that that was negative 1. And x to the negative 1 of b, of course, just means what do we have to put into the function x in order to get the value b? And we saw that that was 1. So we've got uh, the interval that we wanted to have. Now we can sub in f of x of u. So I can just write in here f of, now x of u is this here. So we can just write that in b minus a divided by 2 times u plus b plus a over 2. And now we need to know the derivative of x with respect to u. Well, since this is a constant, it's just going to fall away. So my derivative would be that. So I have b minus a over 2 du. Now, since this does not depend on my u, I can pull that in front of my integral and rewrite and I'm going to write this here I'm going to call that f bar of u so I just have f bar of u du so in other words f bar of u is defined as just being f of b minus a over 2u plus b plus a over 2. Right. So now if we continue, we see that we're just about at our goal because this can be calculated using our function g, g of f bar. Because using g, we saw that we could calculate the integral of any function up to degree 3 between negative 1 and 1. So that's exactly what we have. So if we continue to write this out, we see that we can just substitute in the definition of g of f bar, which would just be f bar of negative 1 over the square root of 3 plus f bar of 1 over the square root of 3. That's just the definition of g. Now we can continue to sub in. We have b minus a over 2. And now we want to sub back into this definition for, for f bar. That just means f of b minus a, right? I'm just looking at, at this here. Can I get that there? Yeah, you can see it. b minus a over 2 times u plus b plus a over 2, right? Then plus f of well, I guess I shouldn't write u there, should I? I should actually write what it is that we're putting in there. Uh, after all, we're talking about f of this here. So I'll just write that in. Negative 1 over the square root of 3. That is a negative 1. Okay. And then here we have f of b minus a over 2 times 1 over the square root of 3. That is a 1. Plus b plus a over 2. Now we can just simplify that a little bit. b minus a over 2 times 
f of, now these two minus signs, just swap the direction of, the, of a and the b, so I have a minus b over 2 in the square root of 3 plus b plus a over 2 plus f of b minus a over the square root of 2 uh, times the square root of 3 because this 1 did not change anything right? plus and then this change stays the same of course b plus a divided by 2 right so now we have what we had been wanting all along if you come up with your crazy function f and you tell me what a and b are then all I have to do is plug a and b into this equation here on all of the places where a and b make an appearance and then I get some value here let's say I get the value I'm just gonna call it m and I get some value here I'll call this n so I tell you I say okay tell me what f of m is and this will of course be some concrete value like for example 16 or something like that and now tell me what f of n is and so you'll give me those concrete values and I'll substitute them in for this and multiply by b minus a divided by 2 and I will get the exact integral for your crazy crazy function f in other words I win and in the next video we will do an example